Today, we're going to be talking about the Core Cloud Systems Credit Card Reconciliation Program. We're going to walk through the process of how it, the field experience will be and how the guys will be getting their credit card receipts in from the field. Also, we'll be showing you in the second version of this, the back side of this, where how we get the information, we reconcile the tra- credit card. Tra- a note about this is that I'm showing you the standard version, which is what we consider our out of the box, let's say, uh, functionality. Everything's ready to go from the beginning, that it, from the minute we install it. You can, of course, always ask for modifications and changes with our solution. So, you know, just keep that in the back of your mind. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're going to see is I'm simulating a, a mobile phone here. And basically, I'm doing this for my desktop. So a few of the features um, I'll explain as we go down the road are a little bit different. But in this particular example, um, I'm going to go ahead and do my uh, my uh, credit card receipt. Now, as the CCS or the Core Cloud Systems uh, lays out, of course, you have other documents that you can process and other apps that you can use or build inside the system. But for today's purposes, purposes, let's look at the credit card uh, um, processing uh, uh, system. So we deliver the system with three different forms. One is job cost coding only. The other is with uh, job cost and GL, and one with just GL. Uh, you can pick and choose which one you want. Of course, you can always change some of the information on the form, but this is how we deliver it. It's got the standard CCS point and click functionality along with the entry point validation, which is what you're seeing right here. I'm in, in this particular case, I'm going to be buying some uh, drywall material from Ace Drywall, and it's going to be about $400 worth. Now, I'm just going to type in drywall. Now, I could dictate this if I wanted to. Uh, so for those guys that are a little bit, you know, keyboard, uh, you know, uh, uh, they don't like the keyboard, they can dictate. Um, in this particular case, this is where it's a little different. Normally, in my case, when I use the system, I just basically take a picture of the receipt and then come back later and do this. But you can always take the picture right then and there. For today's example, I've already captured the particular credit card receipt. So I'm going to go ahead and just pull that right into my document. Now, for some people, this might be it. And all they have to do then is go to the bottom and produce and, and route the form. Uh, some folks can code. And this is kind of, you, if they just route the form from here, then the coding functionality is done by somebody else. If they know how to code, we made it very simple. So in this example, I'm going to go ahead and split this coding because I want to pick up some. It's going to be the Northwest Foods job. And you can see that's, you know, that's that entry point validation. And in this case right here, um, I know the cost code is 9 uh, two fifty. So if I come over here and look at that, I'm going to pick this up at the drywall material. And then I'm going to also then turn around and duplicate for to pick up the balance of this transaction, which in this case will be $250. And the same job applies. Now I could you know pick it up to a different job if I want to. And then this one is going to go to uh, 9-210. I typed in drywall plaster uh, or any of that. Uh, you will see how that works. Like if I knew it was plaster, um, I could type in plaster and it would bring me to the same spot here. And so since this is a material cost code, I've gone ahead and coded this out. Now, at this point, I'm done. Now, you notice there's a signature function, but that's going to be coming in the approval side. If I needed to say sign it, I could actually do that here and sign it on my phone. But for the most part, that's basically all you have to do to count. Now, on the other side of the coin, now we're going to move this receipt uh, forward. So this is where... Generally speaking, in the approval process, you have several options. You can either send it straight into the back office and not have it go through approval, which some people do. But if you want this to go through, say, a PM or maybe a supervisor, you could do that as well. And this route slip here, um, I'm going to show you this routing as a manual function, but this can also be an automated function. So I'm going to go send this to Mike, and then when we get on the approval side, we'll see what how this looks. But basically, at this point in time, I'm finished with this. I hit route. And that's pretty much what's uh, what's going to happen here on the form. Now, if I ever wanted to preview the form, I could always save the form at this point. If there was any calculations on the form, it would do the calculations for you. And then from that point forward, um, I can generate the document. And this is the uh, output that you can design. Now, this is how it comes standard. But we have a document that basically uh, comes in. We have a cover sheet, as you can see right here, and then it attaches a receipt along with you. Now, I'm seeing this on a mobile phone, so I could you know, make it bigger and so on and so forth. But this is what the documentation or the image documentation that's going to actually go over to Sage and also go over to TimberScan. So at this point in time, I would basically route, and that's the process that we would have um, from the, uh, the field. Now, Mike is going to receive 
okay, he's going to receive this email. Now, this email is going to tell him that, hey, you've got a transaction in there. Uh, we need you to come in and review it. And this information that you have on the email can be tailored. Uh, and that's part of the system that you can do out of the box. Uh, and you notice right here, I can go and click right here, and it automatically brings me back to the system. So I don't have to go log in or anything else. Basically, it brings me straight in. It knows my credentials. I can come in here and I can go look at the receipt and see how, you know, what they spent on it and so on and so forth. I can come down here and see the coding. If I don't like how it's coded, I can change it. And then down here, if I come over and I need to sign it, basically I can either signature sign it like this and confirm it. Or uh, in this case, my cat, or I have uh, um, uh, a email uh, certified <coughs> signature. So that basically um, I have it tied to my password and this gives me an authorization here. Now, once I've done with this, I would hit submit and that's the process uh, of submitting it into the back office. So we took it from the field, it went through the uh, process of, of, of approval and then we've now submitted that to the field. Next, we'll go to the back office. So now let's take a look at the back office. So we've processed the credit card transaction in the field. We ran it through the project manager for him to approve it and make sure the coding is okay. Now I'm in the back office and I'm gonna be the credit card processor. So at the first step of the process, the first thing I'm gonna do is go in and download my transactions from the uh, credit card company. And this is just an example of what you would do. You would bring that transaction down and it would just you know lay out here, just a very simple little Excel spreadsheet. And then from there, basically what you would do is go into statement listing and you would import that file. And that's a pretty straightforward. You'd give it a, top, a, a name like Tug Demo. Um, you, uh, you could come down here, import all sorts of different transactions like Home Depot, Ride Express, you know, all your gas cards. When you get down to select the file. It's very simple. You just add, choose a file, and you know, go pick the file that you're looking for, which would be this right here. And then you would just come back over here and hit OK, and then process that transaction. Now, I've already done that, so basically here, it's dropped the transactions into this particular grid. Now, notice that I've just downloaded a couple of transactions here, and um, and and I'm going to come over here and um, basically come in and uh, let me let me uh, unmatch a few of these here so you can kind of get the idea of how this works here. All right, so basically, I have three transactions here. On this side, these are all the receipts that have come in. And you can see there's a, a two ace drywalls. There's the one that we just created, which is for that 400 bucks. And then NW Concrete right here. So basically what you're looking at here, the first step of the process after you download the transactions is you just touch reconcile. And it goes through the system and it basically tries to reconcile what it can. And you notice it picked up all three of these transactions. Now, if it had any trouble with that, you have full functionality here. Where basically, like for instance, if you were trying to reconcile this test transaction, you could come in here and edit the transaction. Uh, and even from here, you could send it back to the actual approver uh, by using the route function and getting them to fix the uh, transaction for you. So you have the edit, you can also view. So you see the full documentation, you have full control over that. We have all the footing processes here. So basically you can do different batches. Some people go to a weekly, uh, if you have a lot of credit card transactions, you may go to a weekly reconciliation. So you can pull in those weeks and process those batches. Um, this gives you the ability to kind of check, like in this particular case, we zeroed out all the, uh, and this balances for the reconciliation side, so we know that we're good. And these are just some filters that help you kind of get to where, because if you think about it, if you have two, 300 transactions, you want to be able to filter by card number and so on. You may do them part at a time or however, but hopefully by just hitting reconcile, all of this is done. And it only leaves a few stragglers in here that haven't been um, certified. Now, at that point in time, if you did have any here, you could just send a Dingham email, and that Dingham email would go out to the cardholder saying, hey, I need support for this transaction. And then they would go into the system, build the form, or link back to the form, and then fill out the form and submit the credit card transaction. You could also, too, create the receipt for them. So if you didn't want them to have to deal with it, you could just create the receipt. Or in some cases, you may get two charges over here for one receipt, like a Southwest Airlines bill. Um, if you bought the early word, uh, it, they break it into two transactions. So we give you the ability to handle that. And of course, down here, as you highlight these, you can see all the coding and stuff like that. So it's more relevant at that point in time. Now, this is the reconciliation component. Once you're done with this, this is where the real value comes into play, is that you'll come over here and then you'll just come in and say transfer to TimberScan. And then once that's complete, basically what's happened is 
is that it will go through once we refresh the screens. Uh, it'll go through there and clear out all this side over here, leave the receipts that didn't get reconciled. And then now I'm going to step into TimberScan and show you what that's going to look like on the TimberScan side. So let me bring that in over here. So if you're familiar with TimberScan data entry, um, basically what we've done is we've actually taken and we automatically, now I mean automatically, we've generated this transaction. So we build a statement. And so the statement is, uh, can be user defined, but this is what comes out of the box. And we've attached a copy of each one of the receipts for that particular statement. But what's really great is we automatically came down here and did the distribution. So in this particular example, what you're finding is, is that basically all the data entry is being done for you. If you're okay with it here and it's ready to go, you can just push this all the way to final approval, or you can send it through the general routing functionality that we have in TimberScan. But this is where the, the back office savings is, and it's about 70% of the time. And as you can tell right away, this is a very big time saver. You're already using TimberScan. It's, it, it just fits right into the system. If you're not, um, you know, we sell a version of TimberScan that allows you to do this, uh, the reconciliation, the automatic posting so that you can do it as a single user. But uh, that concludes our credit card process. Um, one thing I do want to talk to you a little bit about in the next session is going to be reporting and the, the field experience and what they can do with the receipts and so on and so forth. But as you can tell, we store all of this and all your supports there with it, and then all your information is done in detail here. Now, you could post this in summary, or you could post individual transactions. So we give you some options out of the box to allow you to do that as well. So that concludes the back office process. The last thing we want to look at today is going to be the search, advanced search and the reporting function of the credit card reconciliation program. Let's go ahead first off and we'll jump through the search feature. Basically, we have some keywords that we've associated with all the information that we collect on these forms for credit card processing. Um, one of the cool things about Cool Cloud Systems is that um, it's built upon a database of what we call smart data. Every answer or every question that we ask and all the answers that we get, we store in our databases so that they can basically be utilized in other applications and things like that. You'll also understand, too, the reason we use the entry point validation is so that that data can be valid enough to where we can send it back into a Sage or, or we can uh, do other things with it, maybe combine it with Sage reports or timber scan reports to get us to the point to where um, we can actually um, process, uh, you know, uh, K, uh, KDI reports and things like that. Um, so what we've done is just because we do that, we now have a pretty robust search feature. So in this particular case, let's say that I'm looking for something for, uh, for drywall. Let's say I want to look at all the forms that, that uh, basically in the keyword process is called with drywall. And you can see I have unfinished forms, I have submitted forms here, I have deleted forms. Uh, if I went through there too, if I had any routed forms, it would show me those as well. But you can see right away, this is basically storing and looking based on that search feature, all the information where drywall is in the reference. So for instance, if I were looking on a credit card receipt here, and I came in and said, okay, I'm looking for, you know, a drywall receipt. I can come over here. And then once I find the receipt that I'm looking for, I can either drill down on the answers. And when I see the answers, you can see I store all this information in the database, along with the signatures and the attached images. And this is all in the cloud. So this can be done on a mobile phone. Or I can regenerate the paperwork. So if I had, say I was going back to Ace Drywall to return something, I could just flip my phone search it out and then hand this back to the guy in the, on the, in, at the will call desk and say, hey, you know, here's where I bought it and here's my receipt. So <clears throat> the receipts and things like that that we store in the cloud are all stored so that they can be accessed by the cardholder and regenerated at any given time. Now, this particular case, you can see right here that <clears throat> I searched off the keyword functionality and that's something in the form setup you can actually design. But let's say that I'm looking for something that had a $60 charge in it. I can now go to the advanced search feature. And since I know it's on a credit card, I'm going to come down here and pick my credit card. And I'm just going to put in here 60. And this is going to go through the system and it's going to search out everything or every form where 60 was in it. So if you notice right here, this doesn't really you know, give me all the information that I want to see. 
But if I drill down again on this uh, bicarbonate, which is, I think, the one that has the 60 bucks in it, you can see that's where it picked up the $60. But it can key off of any of this information. So as I ca capture information and build those uh, descriptions up here for the form, uh, and also have the information that we, we keyed in on the form itself, I have the ability to be able to go search this information and pull it up and reproduce the information itself on the documentation. Now, the other aspect of the system is a reporting capability. So <laughs> what good is the information if you can't report on it? So in this particular example, when we set up the actual credit card forms, we went in there and we made certain questions reportable. And you can see right away, I have these questions over here, and then I have these questions right here. Now, I'm going to make it real quick just for the purposes of the demonstration, but I'm going to go ahead and select all of the transactions. I can put my date parameters in, and I can say which forms do I want to search, and then I can come over here and hit apply. Once I've done that, then basically what happens is it goes out and it pulls all the information that I'm looking for. Now, I could come up here and say, you know what, I want to go in here and organize this by job. So I can come in here, now I see all the per, all the uh, receipts that were for the Northwest Foods job. Or maybe I want to do it by job and by vendor. So you see, I can organize it like that. Or maybe I just want to see a particular vendor. I can come in here, and we have a full functionality of searching and reporting that we offer in here. So once you get your, your, uh, your information the way that you want it, then you can come back over here and just export this to Excel. And it creates an Excel spreadsheet with this information. So the reporting of the system is very, very flexible, and it allows you a lot of flexibility to be able to pull the information out and use it in other areas without having to get a customized import or export built. Now, we can do that as well, but just to let you know that a lot of folks want us to be able to submit this information onto their local servers so that they can combine it with Office Connects and some of those products and build some pretty elaborate reporting. Now, the other feature that we have in here is you can always go in and view the record, which is what I'm doing here, and you saw that a little bit earlier. But one of the cool pieces here that we just added is if you have certain rights, you actually can go edit the record. Now, editing the record brings up that original form. So, like, if I had, uh, you know, complete yes or no or billing yes or no as a question on the form, I could later come back and modify the form or make adjustments to the form if I have the rights to be able to do that. So you can see right away that basically in this whole process of reporting and things like that, it's very, very powerful. And finally, if you look at the save feature, if I, I'm going to use this report a lot. I can call this my credit card search. Um, next time I come into the system and I want to run that report, I just have to select it. And then it'll, it'll repopulate this and just apply the transaction, uh, apply the grid to it. And it'll pop up my, my data from here. So that pretty much uh, is all the information that I wanted to share in this particular uh, series of presentation. Um, there is a few other aspects of the form design and things like that that we can go into. But for the most part, the standard ap application for credit card record humiliation, this is what you get. Thank you very much.